My first doorway into it was making a drawing machine. It was a machine that could make a drawing. Not much different than the, the machines that the kids made last year in Robot Camp 1. Except for it was not on wheels, it was like on a sort of big arm that shook. Um, and from that, that's really where I started my path down the art technology. And eventually, yeah, I arrived at, art, at robotics, which is sort of the natural step from kinetics. And at the time, I was really sort of interested in two things. I was interested in, in autonomy in art. So, you know, like the surrealists, that they would try to sort of tap into their subconscious, because I was a painter, so trap, tap into their subconscious to derive imagery from it. And that's why I made the drawing machine in the first place, because I wanted to have, make a machine that made the initial line for me, and then that thereby sort of extracting an interesting image from it. Um, and at the same time, I was also reading a lot about Asian philosophy and the Enzo circle. So I made this machine that made an Enzo circle. Where an Enzo circle is, in order to make a true Enzo circle, you have to sort of deliver yourself from consciousness and just draw a circle. And, and if you can do that, you can actually make a perfect circle. And I spent a lot of years just making drawing machines. For some reason, it was really interesting. The idea of a machine or art that could make art uh, or generative art, now it's got a title. Uh, and it still kind of fascinates me, but I've sort of branched off to more sort of uh, obscure topics now using this technology. Well, the elevator's music had those, um, it had four robots that came out of the elevator. But a good portion of people were afraid of them. They thought that they were being monitored by people, which points back to this idea of paranoia and the current state of affairs that our world's in right now. Uh, yeah, they thought that the machines were gonna, what, come out and laser, shoot them with lasers or something. Uh, but then there was this other aspect of it, which was really interesting. Some people became very enamored with the robots. And even though they were startled at first because the robots came out of nowhere, they were instantly, you know, drawn to them and they wanted to talk to them, they whistled to them, they were concerned with them. One time one of the robots got hurt and this whole group of people went to the, you know, to the museum administration or, or to the guard say, the robot's broken, the robot's broken. And so there was this sort of interesting per parental relationship that developed from people's experience with the robots. And, and that points to this other subject that I'm becoming more and more interested in, and that's the way we perceive um, things to be anthropomorphic, the way we apply anthropomorphic tendencies to anything, anything, any little thing that's moving, we immediately associate characteristics that are human to it. And once I realized that, um, applying it to automated systems became really interesting. I don't necessarily have to program artificial intelligence. I don't have to program things that are really thinking. The mind, the human mind, will do all of the association for me. So I just have to set up a system that simulates those motions, and then we will bring the rest of um, those emotions to the system. And taking those, those ideas and applying it to, to art is, it, it basically becomes infinite.